is Gloria Steinem, and I'm really happy to be at Pavlina's Kids Place. Hey everyone, this is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. I'm on location with feminist, uh, best-selling author, and activist Gloria Steinem. Hello. Hello. This is uh, like multimedia all by yourself. It's great. <laughs> yes, thank you. So how are you? Uh, I, I, actually, I'm fine. I am probably fine. Awesome. That's great. Okay. So what do you think is the biggest problem with teen girls today? Um, that they don't get listened to enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I think that, <clears throat> you know, everybody else has prescriptions for mm -hmm. what young people, but maybe especially young women, yeah. should do and not do. And the most important thing, as always, is to listen to each other and yeah, see definitely. who the unique person is inside that girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So growing up, kids have all kinds of obstacles. What kind of obstacle did you have, and how did you overcome or deal with it? Mm. Um, well, I think probably the biggest obstacle in retrospect was that my mother and I, my mother wasn't so well, so our roles got reversed. Oh. You know, I was kind of her parent. I was looking after her, not all the time, but a lot of the time. Um, and at the time, right then, I just accepted it because yeah, that's the definitely. way life was. But in retrospect, I realize it was hard, you know, because yeah. it, it makes you grow up too soon. And I suppose I've dealt with it in all kinds of ways. I mean, I've continued to be a, ca a caregiver because that's the way you think of yourself. Yeah. So it becomes difficult for you to ask for help, mm -hmm. you know, because you're used to <laughs> yes, giving giving help. Um, so I, I, you know, I think I'm I'm still dealing with it, um, but on it had a good side too, which is it allowed me to know that I was competent. You know, mm -hmm. that even when I was very young, uh, I could do all those things. So it had both advantages and not such advantages. Yeah. Awesome. That's really great then. So last year you were at the Rollins College and you were really sick with the flu, but you still you know, made time to do your book signings and also your uh, speeches. So do people know how passionate you are and caring like that? Um, gosh, I don't know, but uh, I, I love what I do. Yeah. You know, it isn't like it's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I feel really lucky to be part of something I care deeply about and also to be able to do it to make a living uh, <clears throat> without just having one job, you know, to be a freelancer, for, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah, I think, I think people know because I think in a social justice movement, most of the people in it are there because they care passionately, so we know that. Definitely. That's great. Okay, so I talked with uh, Pete Seeger, and he has a lot of historical moments. Um, and he was talking about, you know, a free phrase, a freeze, uh, phrased moment um, when he was singing on stage with a friend, and they were singing "Give Peace a Chance" for like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a special moment? You know, there's so many. Yeah. I think it's it's really hard. The, the 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 times I feel most deeply, I think, are when someone stops me. You know, maybe it's after a meeting or it's in the street and. It's not necessarily, it's not exactly all personal. It's just that they recognize me as part of a movement that matters to them. Yes, so they want to tell me how their lives have changed for yes. the better because of this movement. And I often think when I'm listening to that story, I think, okay, if only I had been part of this, it would have been enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So reality shows, do you watch any? And if not, like, which ones would you want to see? Uh, you know, the only ones that I've seen that have anything to do with reality <laughs> are the hoarders ones. Oh, we have seen those. Yeah, yep. because I think you can't fake that, you know, yes. the way the houses look. And the way, uh, and those are helpful, I think, because they're cautionary tales about consumerism gone uh, yes. crazy. Mm -hmm. The rest of the reality shows are varying degrees of negative I think yeah. because they present for, especially the housewives shows oh, yeah. are negative because it's as if they're part of a backlash against the women's movement to try to present women as hating each other competing with each other mm -hmm. being rich you yeah. know all because they married rich men not mm -hmm. because they made the money themselves yeah. usually yeah. Um, full of plastic surgery mm -hmm. for you know I those housewife shows are very sinister and mm -hmm. very unreal. Yeah, right. definitely. 
Definitely. And also, um, I watched um, Misrepresentation, mm -hmm. and I loved it. It was really cool. It was a very eye-opening thing, so mm -hmm. that was cool. Yes, no, I, I think um, we absorb this stuff all the time, but we yeah. don't see it all together. So I thought Misrepresentation yeah. did a very good job. Yes. And I hope that people who are listening to us will go. There's a Misrepresentation website, mm -hmm. and they've continued the activism. But as just as you say about seeing it, I hope that... that people who are listening to us who haven't seen it see it because it makes you understand the brainwashing we're subject yeah. to <laughs> in the media and so it helps to unbrainwash us. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So what are your upcoming plans and events? Um, well, I just came from Texas uh, doing something for Planned Parenthood there as I am doing here. And, of course, Texas has a governor named Rick Perry who's uh, very, very hostile to reproductive freedom as a right. fundamental human right and has uh, refused even federal money if it would help Planned Parenthood, despite the fact that Planned Parenthood is mostly doing health care in yeah. general and cancer screenings and so on. Very, very, very punitive. It kind of makes you think that he... Somehow a member of the Taliban strayed into being <laughs> governor of Texas. <laughs> so I was doing a, 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 you know, a meeting, a benefit there. And, and the people are great, you know, yeah. the community people who, who are supporting and making sure that Planned Parenthood still exists are great. Yeah. And I'm doing the same thing here. And mm -hmm. I was here 10 years ago yeah. for this same group. Uh, and, you know, so I love, I love doing all this and I love traveling, but I'm also trying to be more of a writer again mm -hmm. and, and stay home yeah. uh, and, and do some writing. Because writing, I love the communal work, but writing is also something that's unique mm -hmm. to each of us. Yeah, so I hope to do that more. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>